Please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Machete movie thoughts. So I'm pretty sure Tom Savini had as much fun in this movie as he has since From Dusk Till Dawn. But was his character even, you know, resolved? Did, did he ever die in the film? I don't know, I, I might have missed it because the climax certainly did have a bunch of stuff just happening, but... Yeah, I don't know, I, I just didn't really see him die. The last time I saw him, he was in the office receiving, you know, when, when what's it called, the Booth was receiving that call from Seagal when he finally said, you know, okay, this is one mistake too many, you're gonna die. You know, so, yeah. The... I... Something that kind of bothered me, bothered me about this film is Rodriguez can come up with some fun gags, you know, bits where, yeah, you know, something happens. I mean, the, the small intestine thing, great, you know, but apparently he also just can't quite come up with enough that, you know, he, that he doesn't have to rip himself off. I, I really wish, I mean, I'm sorry, but... Machete waking up in bed, there's a woman there, and there are people outside that, you know, burst in and he shoots at them. That scene was a million times better in Desperado. You know, the, the just the, the, the tension of the scene in Desperado, and the whole, just, Sama Hayek was a better actress than uh, Alba, and Antonio Banderas better than Danny Trejo, and just the whole thing... <sighs> And the bad guys had way too easy of a time finding, you know, it's just Booth goes up to some random day laborer, drives up, you know, points the gun, so, you know, where's that? And the, the, that ridiculous, uh, she is, you know, talking about Booth, and he's like, she, she, oh, the, you know, the, and, and he doesn't say, you mean the, you know, the leader of the network. He just assumes that he means... <sighs> Yeah, and yeah, he just gets directions to there and they blow the place up. Did Machete even know the place was blowing up? He just jumps out of a window and then it blows up. Anyway. Yes, there's that and then there is... A character loses at least one of their eyes and then comes back and kicks ass. I'm sorry, once upon a time in Mexico... That was basically the one really good scene in Once Upon a Time in Mexico. You know, he, he did that perfectly. The music, the staging, the editing, everything was fantastic about that scene in that movie. So why would he do it in this? I have no problem with Michelle Rodriguez. She certainly is hot. I guess she has some acting capability. Not enough to, you know, ex I mean, if you have, like, like a, a leader kind of figure, you need, that, that person needs gravitas. Speaking of lacking gravitas, when Jessica Alba gets up on the hood of that car and yells, you know, yeah, I am with you, you know, other than, as my friend Kyramid Head on here, user Kyramid Head on here, pointed out, you know, she's basically spouting just, you know, annoying political, you know, stuff. Other than that, she does not have the gravitas to pull off a big speech. You know, not even remotely. I don't know why Rodriguez went to such great lengths to cast nearly no one with acting chops in this movie. I mean, De Niro is like the one who has them, and... 
out of some of the scenes, he's really also just too... And I don't blame him, I'm, I'm sure it was like the direction, and it is somewhat fun to watch De Niro just, you know, be, you know, over the top. But yeah, for example, why does you know, De Niro shoot his A? There's, there's no reason for him to do that, it just gets him into a worse situation. Now, the political stuff, I mean, I do basically agree, I wish that the, you know, The, the idea that, you know, illegal aliens just, you know, take advantage and stuff like that, you know, is obviously, I don't agree with that at all. And I personally think that quite a few people, quite possibly, quite possibly the majority of all people, would basically, you know, do a good job if just, if they had the opportunity to work and they got enough money to get by, so they... But anyway, I'm not really going to get deeply into that. I'm just saying, I basically agree, but still, the, the way this movie handled the politics was really terrible. You know, it is way too obnoxiously just in-your-face preachy about it. And just this... I gotta ask... Did, did I just not pay enough attention to the news? Is, is there some story that I missed? Did any actual Republican senator, like, stage his own, you know, shooting? And, you know, was he willing to have someone very obviously killed? It seems to just happen in heavily lib movies, you know. I, I don't know, it just seems... I just prefer when something like that, you know, when, when you stick to the facts, you know, just the facts, ma'am. When you just say, you know, this is what they actually do in real life. Instead of saying, ooh, can you imagine a Republican, you know, maybe just getting shot so they could look really important. You know, I don't know, just, yeah. At least in this one, I guess he didn't know himself. It was his aide who planned it. I was in completely by the, I mean, basically the, the confessional stuff, you know, that was really just to give them the evidence, you know, I, I didn't really see that in the character, and I didn't really feel proper remorse from Booth, you know, he just, it, it just seemed like they wrote that in to, yeah, have that, and, and the bit where, you know, Padre, which, I haven't looked the movie up on IMDb since watching it yet, so I don't know if that actually is Cheech Marin's character name, but I bet it is, because Rodriguez just does not bother to give his characters actual names. He just gives them these descriptive terms, so it's probably Padre, and if he hadn't been a priest, and he, if he didn't have a title, he would probably just have been called Hermano, because that's the Spanish word for brother, and he's Machete's brother. Anyway. He, you know, he's hanging up on the cross. That is, you know, that is one of the cool things about the movie. You know, that is something that you actually, you leave the theater and you're actually talking about. I can't believe they actually nailed a priest to a cross. You know, that and, you know, stuff like the snatch phone, the, like I said, the, the intestine gag, you know. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, and the fact that, you know, prior to the snatch phone, you know, she was naked. She was just completely naked for herself. I mean, it's not quite, you know, what's it called? My Bloody Valentine, but still, you know. That movie did set a standard that is very hard to go lower than. Mm, yes, so, you know, he's up on the cross. He's saying, you know, just like you, what was it, killed... That, you know, whatever, you know, just like you, please respond to this in a way that will incriminate you, I will respond in a way that will incriminate me, you know, wow, that was just, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, it is supposed to be that way, because it is a tribute to these, you know, dumb action flicks. Now... Danny Trejo, I like the guy. I really like the guy, but this idea that he's just picking up all these chicks. I mean, he has sex with like four different women in this movie. Two of them at once, you know, and two of them mother and daughter. 
you know, the, the whole incest thing with the... But again, yeah, obviously, you know, that it, it fits with the 70s or 80s exploitation flicks. So I shouldn't complain, obviously. Anyway, and it's Lindsay Lohan naked, so no, really, I should not complain. The... But yes, actually... Yes, let's talk some more about the the, um, the politics and this whole you know thing with De Niro. First, you have him, you know, he's about to be executed because the you know, and it, it's this thing of you know, oh, everyone, you know, the the bad guys are going to betray each other. So yeah, so he's about to be executed live. And, you know, the, and, you know, Vaughn, Don Johnson, is like, ah, crap, we better leave, you know. Okay, make sure there are not enough guards to, you know, keep him safe. And he actually hops away on the chair. It's, you know, pretty humorous sight. I didn't know how he knew that he, you know, was supposed to hop away, you know, to be safe. But anyway, yeah, so right after that, they have, you know, they're like, you know, you better become Mexican to... And it's like, okay, why exactly? Well, obviously, because they're, they'll need him to be dressed as a Mexican later. You know, really. <laughs> Rodriguez kind of falls in his own, you know, in, in the trap that he keeps, you know, saying that the, the, the Republicans and such fall in by, you know, having this really stereotypical image of, you know, he, he wears the hat, he wears the poncho, you know, the whole thing. Anyway, you know, and so they hand him a gun, and I don't know, it just seems to me like if he really hated Mexicans that much, for one thing, he wouldn't turn that fast. For another, they wouldn't trust him to turn that fast. I mean, this guy is the main, he, he's the big bad guy. He's the, he's the one you've been fighting against this entire time, you know. Anyway, anyway. So yeah, and he leaves, and he like, I think he shoots some people, some of the, you know, some of Vaughn's guys, who, you know, just kept on coming. I really wish Rodriguez would get better at sort of staging, <sighs> yeah, basically a climax where it doesn't feel like they're just coming out of the woodwork. I don't know, I suppose Desperado did better at that, you know, and, and not making it seem like they were just showing up all over the place. Actually, I suppose the one of the worst offenders is Once Upon a Time in Mexico. But anyway. Yeah, and, you know, then Lindsay Lohan, as a nun, <laughs> the irony is overpowering, shows up and, you know, yeah, so she, you know, is about, she, she's gonna shoot De Niro because of her father. Because, yeah. <laughs> And her father with the whole incestuous thing. Insert real life Lindsay Lohan joke about father and bad parenting here. Yes, so she shoots him with the words, for my father, and then remarks, I forget the rest. You know, Lindsay Lohan really needs to show up on set drunk. It's, just, it's, it's really going to be a problem. And so he wakes up just before the movie ends, and, oh, bulletproof vest, you know, and, of course, he gets shot by, I guess, Vaughn's surviving guys, or just people like them, and, I don't know, yeah, so, you have that kind of, and he, you know, falls over on this apparently electrified fence. I thought they were just going to build the fence. I didn't think they had actually built it, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I missed something. There was a lot of exposition in this movie. But yeah, there are, there are you know, various plot twists that are really just there for the sake of you know, surprising us. We have the, you know, the naked chick in, in the beginning who they were supposed to be saving. She's suddenly working for... Seagal, and then Seagal kills her, you know, this stuff, it just, it doesn't matter, you know, it, and, and it's not like, it, we don't really care when she gets, I suppose we, we care that she's hurting Machete somewhat, but we don't care that she 
is a bad guy or that she gets killed right after, you know, so it's that kind of thing. And it's not... Rodriguez enjoys killing off characters that are now useless to, to, to the story, but it's really only, I don't know, I guess since the 2000s that he has gotten so sloppy that we don't even care when the character dies. You know, in some of his earlier work, we actually do, yeah, you know, the, when the this character that might no longer be necessary to the story, we still care, you know, it is still a memorable sequence, you know. The bit with the egg and, you know, Michelle Rodriguez, my ex tried to explain that to me, that that's apparently some Mexican superstition about, like, you know, it was supposed to show if he was getting better or something with the way the egg came out on the floor the next morning. That's why he checked it, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Now, as I was saying earlier, Danny Trejo's age is kind of showing. One thing is that he can pick up all of these chicks. The fight with him, between him and Seagal, it feels really heavily edited to hide the fact that both of these men are well past their prime. And Seagal is not just age, it's also blubber. So, yeah, that, that entire fencing sequence just really didn't deliver the way it should have. Again, I kind of wish that he had hired, you know, someone who would make for a good... Actually, I guess if he had hired, like, a young, good martial arts fighter or something, it would have just really upstaged Danny Trejo, so it probably should have just been that, you know, I don't know. The big climax... Where did Machete get the Machete get those knives that are on his belt? Like you know, were those the scalpels from the hospital? I, I don't think so. But and and anyway, even even so, he doesn't actually wear them on the belt until I think it's when he attacks the limo. You know, when he's above the which actually again now that I think about it is an image that Rodriguez took from Desperado. But anyway. Yes, so, you know, I, I kind of wish that he had used them. And I also wish that he had used that huge, ridiculous machete that he, you know, sports near the very end more. It's actually, it's just about to be used on him, that, which doesn't happen. But, yeah, you know, he barely chops at anyone in the climax. He barely does anything in the climax, really. It's everyone else. Shay returns with that big machine gun and saves him. That I did kind of like. That, you know, Shay, that she, whatever, that she gets a you know, big heroic moment, an important moment. I guess Alba, it would have been nice if she had gotten one as well, but I guess she, she held her own in the home invasion scene, so I guess that's, you know, supposed to make up for it, but yeah, she was kind of just the damsel in distress there at the end. And Miho, deadly little Miho, who does nothing in the film other than look good in a bikini and point a gun at Olba, you know. Why does Seagal cut her ropes anyway? Just, anyway. Why is, why is there a fencing match in the midst of this massive battle between, you know, I, I mean, they could easily gun him down, anyway. The, I think the one thing that did kind of just go a bit too far for me was that Seagal was alive and just, you know, basically fine after the stabbing, and yeah, it was just this kind of, you know, I'm actually, I'm gonna kill myself by Harry Carey, so, yeah. But yeah, and, and there at the end, you also have the network hospital staff showing up and, you know, blowing away some of Vaughn's men. Excuse, excuse me. And, you know, the... Lindsay Lohan is a nun, again, with a silenced... I think it was Mac 10 And she has... Re 
ridiculously good aim because she doesn't she doesn't actually hurt any of them. She just shoots the guns out of their hands with a fully automatic weapon, mind you. That is pretty darn impressive. I also just love how the, you know Machete's plan basically hinged on Booth not being alive anymore by the time what's it called you know April. No, June, you know, called. I just, both of them named after months, yeah. Now, the, but, but yeah, and the bit about the, the guy that they call, the, the guy that June calls, you know, is, able to respond <laughs> able to respond with you know evidently the senator shot your your husband how do they know that were the, were there cameras in the oh wait wait sorry the limo driver told them i'm guessing and they trusted him i'm guessing I did somewhat like the, you know, how Machete just goes nuts with gardening tools, you know, and just takes out all these guys. But again, the, the dialogue about, ah, oh, we'll let them take care of our children and park our cars, but we won't let them into our country, you know, yeah, just really, really on the nose. I guess both of them, both April and June, were drugged and upstairs, or at least somewhere, in the church, since there was that, you know, what's it called? Nun outfit hanging there. So they didn't hear all of that, you know, shooting in the church, and the people shooting up the church didn't bother to check the rest of the church. You know, for how easy of a time they have finding lose, yeah, she she's place and the ICE officers place. You know, Alba, they can't find. You know, April and June, June, even when they're, you know, I mean, not being able to find two naked chicks in this movie, you gotta be blind. Was that really Alba in the shower? I've, I've heard she usually uses a body double, so I don't, I don't know if she actually did. Anyway, and why did the camera start out, like, turned? Anyway, I suppose that more or less covers it. There were a couple of things that I just found really ridiculous and didn't really amount to anything anyway. That guy who kept throwing up after shooting people, my, my ex who I watched this with pointed out that first time he's actually, you know, they're shooting a pregnant woman. You know, so you could understand him throwing up then, but then he just keeps throwing up every time that someone is shot in his vicinity, or he shoots him, whatever. It just, it starts out as this thing that, that makes sense, you know, I mean, he just killed an unborn child. That, yeah, obviously. And then just goes, and, and it doesn't lead to anything. It's not like he just suddenly throws down his gun and says, you know what, I never liked shooting people anyway, or something. And then you got that kid who's like always drawing... I don't even know his name. He just shows up a, t twice and draws, you know, and, and she is just opening up the garage and saying, okay, hey, check out the guns. Oh, there's a federal agent there. Maybe I should have closed the door behind me. Well, anyway, since you're here, I don't want to know if you want to keep our secret. First, you should know that this is the headquarters of our entire operation. These are our enemies. This is, you know... So anyway, are you gonna keep our secret? Oh, whew. I was kind of scared there for a second, you know. And yeah, so and he's there drawing, and they're like, you know, who's Machete? And he did. Oh, this is the guy I drew him, and 
how does he know what machete he looks like, and why is he... And then the final climax, you just see him drawing. It's not that he gets shot trying to draw. You know, I mean, say what you will about the boy in Desperado, at least there is some kind of resolution to that. You know, he shows up a couple of times, and the last time something, you know, really happens there. I'm not going to give away what, in case, you know... People watching this area haven't watched Desperado, but yes, you know, something actually happens. And with this, it just, yeah, Rodriguez just keeps, you know, coming up with various ideas, and instead of thinking, I should use that for a later movie, he just throws them all into the same movie, and yeah, it just gets really, yeah. I think that actually pretty well covers. Also, the hospital. How could they find the hospital so easy? You know, I, I, it was supposed to be like an underground hospital and very really secret and everything. And, yeah, just nothing. Actually, I suppose that does lead to the one sequence where he does seem sorry, the, the Booth guy. He does say, I'm sorry, my friend, after, you know, joking a bitch on that guy who was sent to kill Machete twice and failed both times. So, yeah. And then, you know, you, if you're gonna apply logic to the movie, you could maybe ask, why does Machete, you know, instead of just taking the shot, why does he look off to the side, you know, other than we're supposed to see the sniper from his perspective, you know, so, yeah. And also, why could no one else tell? You know, it didn't even seem like the other guy was particularly hidden. I don't know, it didn't to me, anyway. And, yeah, he just kind of... Yeah, and if there was any kind of investigation into it, it would show what angle it came from, but, yeah, whatever. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.